So good morning from the Everglades. So I was out here a couple days ago photographing the sunrise and after that I put the tripod away and just started wandering around with the canoe and I ended up in an area that I'm really unfamiliar with and uh, it there was so much fog that oh it was just just uh, beautiful the the light was just captivating and I had my uh, 28 to 75 millimeter lens attached to the camera and I just floated around for about an hour and a half um, just photographing whatever um, caught my eye and you know with with uh, 28 to 75 I was able to zoom in and get some intimate landscapes and some wide angle shots as well so I just love those point and shoot mornings where I just go out with no expectations I'm in unfamiliar territory, perhaps. Uh, nothing's planned out, and I just shoot whatever captures my eye. Um, you probably like to do the same thing, and in fact, some of my best images have come from those times. But um, unfortunately, I had discovered a while back that as I download my images um, from those times, uh, many of them are not sharp. Uh, as an example, I may have a sharp foreground object, but everything else is out of focus. So that just isn't acceptable. <laughs> so I, I thought there's got to be a way that I can just go out and point and shoot and know that I'm going to get a sharp image every single time. And there is, and I want to share that with you today. Okay, so first of all, an overview. Um, there are three things that I know when I go out with this particular lens, 28 to 75 millimeters. First of all, that setting my aperture at f14 will help me get those sharp images. Second of all, I know that depending on the focal length, I know an approximate distance where I need to focus. And then third, I know that at a given focal length, how far away I should be from the nearest object. All right, so how did I come up with that? All right, well, to begin, let's do a real quick experiment to make my point. Um, if you have a lens, like I described, um, set it to the widest focal length. So in my case, it's 28. So maybe yours is 24. Set it to the widest, and I want you to set the aperture to f8. Now, come over to a scene and put an object about three feet away from you. All right, so three feet away. So I have this object here that's three feet away. And I want you to point to that object and focus on it, then take a shot. So I'm going to take a shot. All right, now what I'd like you to do is to review the image and zoom in. So you're going to zoom in, and I want you to look at the background objects, everything that's behind that three-foot object. You should see that everything is pretty much out of focus. Um, so that would not be an acceptable shot if I was just going out and shooting. Okay, so what just happened there? All right, well, this is where we need to do a little homework and a little research. So if you have one already, what I'm going to be referring to here is a DOF calculator, depth of field calculator. If you have an app on your phone, good for you. You can bring that up now, or you could just follow along with mine here. Um, if you're on a computer, you can find a web link that has a DOF calculator as well. If you don't have either, just follow along with me, and uh, hopefully this will make sense to you. All right, so I have my DOF calculator, and the one I use is called Easy DOF. I'm not sponsored. They're not a sponsor. Um, I just use their app. Uh, so anyway, when you want to make sure when you're using this app that you... Um, have your camera setting in it. So I have my specific camera set in here. So the numbers that you see for me are going to be different than what they would be for you, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, have three settings. I'm going to have focal length, aperture, and focus distance. So you can see those there. Now take a look at the top there where it says near focus and far focus. So notice that that is a very small range of focus and in fact my three foot object will fall within that small range but everything else in the scene basically falls out so that's why that that's why nothing came in focus uh, with that shot you can see it right here that beyond four feet two inches nothing's going to be in focus all right now 
take a look at hyperfocal distance. Think of hyperfocal distance as simply the, the place where you should be focusing, the distance that you should be focusing. And if you want to know more about hyperfocal distance, I have a video about it uh, a few videos ago, so check that out. All right, for this um, setting, hyperfocal distance is 11 feet. That means that if I focus on an object that's 11 feet away, that object and everything beyond it will be sharp and in focus, as well as everything five and a half feet in front of it. So you can see the hyperfocal near on the app um, is about five and a half feet. So everything from that point beyond should be sharp and in focus. What about this three foot object? Well, that's not going to be in the focus range. So it would not work at this setting. So even if I'm using hyperfocal distance, um, I'm still not going to get that three foot object sharp and in focus. Okay, so how do I do that? So basically, when I'm at a focal length of 28, I know that for the most part, the closest object to me is going to be three feet. So I know that I want that object to be sharp and everything else. So using my DOF calculator, I can figure out the correct aperture as well as the focus distance that's going to give me uh, three feet to infinity focus. That's what I'm striving for here. So I go back to my app and I, um, I'm going to change the aperture. I'm going to narrow it down so that I can get a greater depth of field. So I'm at eight. Let's see what happens when I change it. So take a look, take a look at specifically hyperfocal near. Notice how it's getting closer to three feet, which is what I want. Notice that when I finally get to F14, hyperfocal near is three feet. What that means is, is that when I focus on the hyperfocal distance, everything beyond it and three feet in front of me is going to be sharp and in focus. However, that brings me to the focus distance. So I can't just point and shoot at that three foot object. I now have to pay attention to my hyperfocal distance. All right, what is it now? It is just a couple inches beyond six feet. So let's set my focus distance to that. Notice what happens at top, at the top of the app. Near focus is three feet, far focus is infinity. That's exactly what I want. So the reason why a lot of photographers say, don't even bother with this, you know, it's, it's not that accurate. You know, when you're trying to focus on something that is exactly six feet, two inches, um, you know, yes, that makes it kind of silly uh, to think about hyperfocal distance. However, I do know that if I focus beyond that point for just a, a small amount, so let's, let's just try this on my app and see what happens. Let's say my focus distance is seven feet. Look at what my near focus is. It, that's not too bad. Look at what it is at eight feet. And then look at what it is at nine feet, 10 feet. So you can see that if I go from, uh, let's say 11 feet here. So I'm at 11 feet. You can see that my near focus is about four feet. Whereas at a focus distance of six and two inches, it's three feet. So I know that if I have an object that's three feet, I can step back a little ways make it four feet away. And I know that I'm going to have a focus range that's about three to four feet. And I think with my eyes, I think I can negotiate that, right? So, um, so you can kind of guesstimate pretty well where that range would be within the frame. Now, a lot of photographers will say, well, make it even simpler and just shoot and focus one third of the way into your scene. Okay, that, that probably works sometimes, but I don't think it works all the time. And in fact, if I have an object that is three feet away, I know that if I point one third of the way, it's going to be right about where those three foot trees are. And that's going to be too close. I'm not going to get everything in focus if I use that simple rule of thumb. So what happens when you increase the focal length? How does that affect hyperfocal distance and all of that? Well, with that, everything is going to be farther away. Your closest objects are going to be farther away. 
your hyperfocal distance is going to be farther away. Everything gets pushed away. So um, I know that at 50 millimeters, I know that at f14, my hyperfocal distance is 20 feet, which means that the closest object I can get sharp will be 10 feet. So what do I do if I'm shooting around 50 millimeters? Well, I don't have objects that are going to be this close normally. I would not be this close. I would have to zoom out or move away about six, seven feet. So that works for me just fine. Now I have to find where 20 feet is in the scene. Well, 20 feet and maybe about six feet beyond that. And you can look at the app and look at the range that you're comfortable with. Because remember, you're trying to get a foreground object sharp. In this case, it's 10 feet away. So you have some room to breathe with that greater hyperfocal distance. Okay, so what I just showed you is that I can go out here uh, in an impromptu point and shoot and just photograph whatever catches my eye. And if I have my aperture set at f14, I know that with my focal length of 28 to 75, I should be fine. I should have sharpness throughout all of my images. And all I have to pay close attention to is how close the objects are to me and then where I'm going to be focusing in the frame. So I do that with a little bit of knowledge from my DOF calculator. I, I don't bring my calculator out every single time I take a shot and change the focal length. Um, I just know that there's a range that I can work with as far as focus distance. I just have to remember those numbers. So if I can remember 20 feet for 50 millimeters, I know that somewhere between 7 and 20 feet is going to suit my shots that are taken between 28 and 50. Okay, so I'm just kind of extrapolating the numbers. Um, so just remembering a couple of numbers, a few numbers, and setting my aperture to f14, I'm good to go. Anyway, uh, thanks for looking on, and uh, I'll see you next time.